Judith Aronson Ramos, MD, is the Medical Director of Development and Behavioral Pediatrics of South Florida. Specializing in early prevention and diagnosis, she brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to the Autism Channel. Here is Dr. Judy. Welcome to the Dr. Judy Show. Today we're here with Michelle Ramsey, Director of CIP in Melbourne, Florida, and student Megan. Hi guys, how you doing? Thank Hello, you, Dr. Dr. Judy. Judy. Doing fine. Good. So let's start by explaining to the audience what CIP stands for and what the basis of the program is. Sure. CIP is College Internship Program and we're a post-secondary education program for offering really support services as well as a transitional program for those students that really need that extra scaffolding still, whether they're going to college or they're going to live independently and use a career, we have that advising and the social aspect that you won't often find in a college or as soon as you're heading out so to be an adult. So you're not part of a college, I just want the, the parents mm -hmm. to understand, and this is a transition program predominantly for individuals with autism on the autism spectrum. And with learning differences. Learning disabilities, mm -hmm. learning differences. Yeah. Um, and it's to work on those pieces of independent living, social skills, career interests, and then yeah. kids who want to attend college, you can support them through that as well, correct? Absolutely, and a lot of times we find that students, we gear so much when we're in high school on our GPA and whether they're academically ready, and that's what schools are based for, but then we forget about those soft skills. So they still need that advising, the social skills, the executive functioning, the things that are really gonna make them successful when they go off on, on their own. Um, and then on the other hand, a lot of students don't want to go to college, right. but they want to start their career. So they may need help with interviewing, creating that resume, um, self-advocacy, how they're going to talk to their boss. So we have an entire career aspect of it. So Megan, since you're in the program, why don't you share with our viewers you know, what you've gotten out of the program? Well, first of all, how did you first find out about the program? Well, I, before this, I was in Arkansas. Okay. I've been there since I was seven. And uh, Arkansas is, but is I'm going to go ahead and move on, say behind the times when it comes to okay. when it comes to resources for people with Asperger's and autism beyond the age of 18. Okay. I started looking when I realized there were no such programs that I could use in Arkansas. I started looking at the surrounding states. We narrowed it down to a program in Texas, being close, and then CIP in Florida. So you graduated from high school and you were looking for that next step. It had been a couple of years since I graduated okay. high school. I'd also done some college okay. and had some done initially well, the full load, mm -hmm. 12 hours. Mm -hmm. Eventually, though, right. I, I miscalculated and did too many hard courses together, and I wasn't managing my time. I ended up failing a few, quite a few classes. So right now, I think it would help our audience to know what your life is like at CIP. You live in a house or in an apartment? I live in an apartment. With roommates? A, a roommate. With one roommate. And then what programs, what services do you get from CIP? Well, I get academic with Ryan because okay. I get... So you get academic supports. Yes. Do you go to the community? There's a local community college. I do not go to okay. that anymore. Okay. Because I recently graduated from massage school, and right now the academics is covering that next step of, getting, of me getting ready to take the exam and get licensed. So you're on a career track, mm -hmm. and you're becoming a licensed massage therapist. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of academic because I had to go to school become a massage therapist, so it's a, I've been what, they, what you would probably refer to as a combination student. I was actually doing both tracks at various points, Okay. Mm -hmm. depending on where my interest was and what I was trying so to if, achieve. If I can answer that, so some mm -hmm. of uh, Megan's typical schedule mm -hmm. would look like would be wellness, and that could be yes. group and individual. And I've then had both. Had both. We had the therapy that we offered our center, the advising, that's the communication, yes. and when the banking that they assist you with, mm -hmm. the social skills advisor, the academic yes. advisor that also assists with the tutoring, and we have tutors that come in, the career aspect, and yep. then we also go into life skills where we're going into the homes in the evening, and we're helping with the individual cooking and the cooking, executive cleaning. functioning and the cleaning. Yeah, along with roommates. Roommate yes. meetings. So I should disclose to our lovely audience that I have a daughter, everyone knows, who's on the spectrum, and she went through CIP many years ago. And I'm very passionate about CIP because I Thank feel you. it was very pivotal for her to be successful. Now she's in a four-year college and progressing towards her academic degree. But it was those supports, we call them soft skills, but they're really yes. hard skills because they're critical. Time, management, time management, organization. 
organizational skills, managing your finances, things that shopping. normal pe that even normal people struggle with. <laughs> That's right, typical, neurotypical. Not normal. <laughs> typical Nor neurotypical, neurotypical is the neurotypical. term. Neurotypicals, yes. That's true, and we, we all struggle with them to have yes. somebody, especially self advocating. And how do we do that right. in the right way to do it so we're not insulting people, but really getting our point across? So. CIP is throughout the United States. We are. We have six centers. Okay. So we're in Amherst, New York, Bloomington, Indiana, uh, Berkshire, Massachusetts, which is where our national office is. Over in California, we have Long Beach and Berkeley, and then in beautiful sunny Florida. So what are the programs you offer at different ages? Are there things for younger children or middle school children? Our full year program is between 18 and 26, okay. and each of those centers that I talked about are a little bit unique in what they do. Um, we all have the same comprehensive program, but then we have our little specialty. So like in Berkeley, Florida we do the equine program which is and an amazing we have equine more therapy. Based. Like it just depends on the area like in Cal like in New York they have a big arts thing you have also more arts in California like depending on the state you have more mm -hmm. specialty like specialty things and in Bloomington Indiana I understand they're big in art culture and they have a big cult college there with a good art culture which you have students yeah, who like I you know mean. interested in more biology and, I and I such. Do, yeah. So I should mention to our viewers that we have a whole show on the equine program at Stanford. Oh yeah it's amazing. With Dr. It's absolutely Sandra amazing. Wise. So that Dr. is a really and special. And Dean Van Camp you cannot forget Dean. Okay and Dean um, that's right. <laughs> in addition to that we're able to offer two summer programs. We have a high school summer program that's age uh, 13 up till 18 and now we instead of having just beyond for the adults we are incorporating an employee program. So when you come to the 18 to 26 year old summer program that's a two week program it's completely career based oh, okay. and they're yeah they're going to a lot of great sites um, making their resumes being interviewed going to HR department so it, it's wonderful for people that aren't really sure where they want to go but can have that career aspect in, in a nice condensed little format um, and then we're offering two more programs that unfortunately right. you weren't there for <laughs> uh, but we're excited you know uh, CIP is always looking to, to Keep the parents happy and say what are really your needs and that's one of the favorite things about working at CIP is we're growing and we continue to grow. So one of the things that we offer now is GLC, it's a graduate living community. So for alumni such as Megan who will be moving on to that, that aren't quite ready to return back to their home state of say Arkansas and they start establishing roots in our community, now they can live off campus. They do have the option of living on campus, mm -hmm. but we're going to continue for a nominal fee to offer monthly supports. Yeah. And base supports would be an advisor, someone to come into her apartment and check on her. We call it bookends on a Monday and a Friday, make sure everything's going well with the yes. cleaning and, you know, she's healthy lifestyle, as well as continuing the budgeting. We're going to offer workshops. Check-ins. Check-ins, check yeah. Basically, like, you know, since you're not with your parents right. and you still want someone and like... And there's a good food in the fridge and how we doing? <laughs> Are we safe? Um, and the safety aspect of it, that's really the support that we're offering the community. It's 24-hour service. We always have our staff around yes. if they're needed. They're invited yep. to all our social events. All the students have the, the emergency staff reservation numbers in their phones. And I will continue to keep mine in my phone because in the apartment, it's actually not the apartment I'm choosing that I want to live. It's actually not that far from my own one, so it won't be much of, too much of a stretch for the staff to be. drive there. And I think it's interesting for our viewers also to know that CIP has spawned organically living yes. communities. I believe, is it in the Berkshires where graduates of the program have stuck around? Absolutely. They're living their own lives. Yeah, they live in apartments and they've center. had businesses. So I can imagine that sprouting up in other areas as kids and young adults who graduate from CIP maybe feel comfortable and maybe you don't want to go back to Arkansas. That's right. Well, <laughs> my family actually has plans to move to North Carolina, so I'm thinking I'll stay in Florida for a bit till they're ready to move and then I'll follow them because they're because there are good opportunities for me in North Carolina as well as in Florida and I can still come back and visit Florida because North Carolina is only a, about a day's worth drive. I can make a weekend of it down here. I can come back and visit but that one more step towards independence yeah, right. where we're still that little bit of support service, but she has one more step. Uh, the other thing that I really mm -hmm. am extremely excited about is our family support services that we're offering now. So often we notice that when young adults leave the house, kind of the parents are cut off, and that's really hard for the parents. So now we hired a life coach, um, professional life coach, for CIP that will educate the parents, help to with that letting go process, as well as like Megan had mentioned before, when they go home on breaks, sometimes they forget what they were doing at CIP, and we want to continue that structure. So we're going to support the parents in that, and educate them on how to keep that process going. I think one of the strongest aspects, of, <coughs> excuse me, of CIP, especially from our personal experience, my family, was the advising. Yes. So maybe you want to share a little bit about what, what you think is unique about the advising program at CIP. Uh, one of the most important things that I think is helping the parents develop a new relationship with their child. 
because no longer is it really a child, but it's more of a student relationship and how you're really talking to them as a young adult. Um, in addition to the safety aspect. You Do you know? like your advisor? Don't say names. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Yes. What do you think you've gotten out of your personal experience with your advisors? Well, I've had two different advisors. The first advisor I had, she was, a re she really helped me. She helped mm -hmm. me in finding all sorts of information. My, I got shit to my next advisor because there were changes happening at CIP, and I, since I was one of the what she'd call lower maintenance students, I just needed the basic check-ins. I was, okay. I didn't need as much some of the other students, so I was shit to the new advisor who. Honestly, I like them both, but the first advisor will always have a special place in my heart because she's the one who I started with, yes, and she, course, I feel a course. very strong connection with her. And the other thing I think that's unique about CIP is the, uh, the, the word internship comes mm -hmm. from the fact that you match kids up with different yeah. businesses and opportunities. We're proud to say that 100% mm -hmm. of our students have an internship, so whether they're in the college mm -hmm. or they're going to career route, every one of them has an internship, and those skills, Megan can talk some about her internships, they're really wonderful skills that you've learned from them. Let's see, I've interned at three different locations. The, my first one was the Brevard Zoo. I had worked the in the petting zoo. Mm -hmm. their, their petting zoo, which they call the petting zoo, and that was, turned out not to be a good as fit for me as I thought, so I ended up then shifting over to the Broad Humane side, which is up in Cocoa, Florida. I also started doing an internship at Joe's Club because that's after I started focusing on massage. So they wanted me to focus on a more healthcare related internship to start me getting used to, you know, rules, regulations, mm -hmm. the policies. Mm -hmm. do like so when the, when the kids are in the internships, are, they're coached? How do you locate them? What kind of advising do they get through that process? Maybe so CIP definitely is geared on each child's uniqueness. So whether or not they need to have strong support services mm -hmm. or we can slowly fade them out, it really depends on the child and, and what they need, what the student really requires to be successful. So in Megan's case, in the beginning, she had some more stronger support services, and then it dwindled down. We faded that out, and then we went more to her interest level of where she wanted to establish her career and found internships that would definitely actually, align with that. I actually found the Humane Society internship on my own because one of the other students had it, and I think so. I actually that. went. I actually drove up to this shelter in Cocoa and actually applied, get applied to find out when their next training day, like when you could apply. And so I signed up for it. And I ended up landing it. And the career advisor wasn't. I mentioned that she would look into it, but I told her, "Hey, if I go do it myself, can and I land it? Can I do it?" She's like, "Sure." So that that day, I figured, I found. I went up there, asked for the what time and day for the training, then I promptly put that into my schedule and went there and so I was happily out there. That was more of an, in, that was a personal interest internship. Awesome. What I call a feel-good awesome. internship. No career-based skills yeah, attached to that's something I wanted to do. Absolutely. We'll be back in just a few minutes more with CIP with Michelle Ramsey and with Megan. Now here again is Judith Aronson Ramos, Dr. Judy. Welcome back. We're here with the individuals from CIP, Michelle and Megan. Thank you. So also, I would imagine you have a lot of social skill training yes. that goes on amongst all of the individuals and attendees and participants in the program. So maybe you can describe some of those activities, what kind of things you're doing, is there a set curriculum? And So we do, we have a social skills coordinator and she does individual social thinking with the students as well as group social classes. We also um, initiated this month, or actually a few months ago was our internship program that has with it um, mentoring. Mentoring. I mentoring. I, I apologize. Mentoring. I didn't mean mentoring. <laughs> I, I don't worry. I knew what you meant. You know what I meant. <laughs> so we have some of our veteran students mentoring our incoming students, and that has really created some really nice. I am actually one of the Megan's one myself. relationships because yeah. they get to explain the process they went through, how they kind of developed their own skills. You guys Strategy, have become like coping strategies. Coping strategies. How to advocate again. Uh, Self disclosure. You talk about. So they have topics every week that they learn with their social skills coordinator and then they relate that to the students. And uh, we have two meetings. We have one during the week with the peer mentor advisor and then we do something on the weekend where we'll get together with our mentees and we'll go like, most of the time we'll go out to eat somewhere and we'll discuss mm -hmm. things. It's basically a practice. And, and have fun. Yes. There were a lot of the outings or a lot of weekend outings. We do. We have at least four a weekend and that's the 
get everybody in the community, see how they socialize, develop relationships with mm -hmm. students outside of CIP. And we're just kind of sit back and we, and we watch how that happens. And we like to have interns from college assist with that okay. so that they feel like they're with mentors of their own age. Beautiful. Like this weekend, we are doing, we're, a we're busy doing, week. We're doing a, we have a workout group every Friday for students who want to, you know, not, we don't go to a gym, we just do it at the wellness mm -hmm. room. This Saturday, there's going to be some community service where we helped the Field of Dreams, which is this new, new this new place in Melbourne that we actually helped work on. Like helped we helped build the build. playground. Yes, mm -hmm. and well, there's going to be a big thing there where the CIP students are going to be doing that, helping with the long games. I unfortunately cannot go because of massages, but you know I will be there in <laughs> spirit. But I did help with like I helped help design some of the lawn games. I did do my part to help out. And then later that day, we're also we're having a 2K called the Pirates Plunder in Melbourne. I know that there was a lot of yeah. charitable organizations that I, my daughter volunteered yes. with, too, when she was Absolutely. in the program. Why don't you let our viewers know how CIP was founded? So what Dr. Michael kind of? McMahon, mm -hmm. he's our founder of CIP, and that was over 30 years ago. He himself was diagnosed by his staff. <laughs> he, yeah, he started CIP mm -hmm. um, for learning differences. Okay. And that's completely what it was to help young adults with learning differences transition. And when his staff diagnosed him, he realized there was a need also to include the autism um, community and say there's autistic adults out there mm -hmm. that don't have these supports and how successful would they be if they, they were able to get these soft skills. So at this point, what's the breakdown of the individuals you serve? Is it I don't actually demographically have the actual, is like 70% autism spectrum? I would say we're closer to 70%. I think we're ASD. actually, I think Higher. we're probably more than that because mm -hmm. I, with students talk, most of us have AS, most of us have ASD or something mm -hmm. close to it. A few have something other than ASD, mm -hmm. like you know they might have something in addition to. Right. Absolutely. Like we had a student who to. was dyslexic. She said she didn't have it. She actually firmly denied ever having Asperger's. But um, most of the students have Asperger's in some way, shape, form, or something close to it. Right. And I know part Questions of. Dr. McMammon's mission has been that you're not broken, mm -hmm. you're not defective. In fact, he says, right? You are made for good purpose and are inherently valuable. There you go. Yes, that is his slogan. <laughs> and for families that want to know more about CIP, what's the best way for them to get more information? Absolutely. Our website is very comprehensive okay. www.cipworldwide.org. Okay. And that is a great um, vehicle to look at all the different centers, each center and how unique they are, and, this, mm -hmm. and we all offer these comprehensive services. Lots of vignettes on there, stories, and Pictures. Dr. McMammon just came out with a toolkit, so for families okay. they could use, or school districts could use as well, but it's a, it's a large publication with, like I said, stories, success stories, mm -hmm. um, training we guides. We clips from videos of students doing activities, Video like clips. there's a couple of the horse ranch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the different components that we have that can help a child succeed are in this toolkit. And I assume there's an intake process that you do to evaluate. A we do. They yes. would go through the admissions coordinator, uh, the testing. They need to be, the IQ is above 80 for an IQ, as well as they're not behavioral students. And most importantly, they're willing to learn. Mm -hmm. So if they're motivated, we can usually work with them. <laughs> Great. Terrific. Anything else you want to add before we finish up? I don't know if you guys have slimmed the application paperwork out, but I remember when I first came, when I first bought it was like it's, that much paperwork. It is a lot of paperwork. It is a lot. But of I paperwork. remember, I we remember do. my mom going, "Holy crap! This is going to take us at least a month to finish." We are, we're, you know, we're looking for that student that wants to make a difference in their life. Well, I think it's important though that CIP has a rigorous admissions process. Yes, it helps to be successful. You want to be careful that you are taking in those individuals that you can serve yes, and not so just trying to serve on everyone. Like behavioral mm -hmm. issues like it was very specific on what they, they, they but I think it's important we state you know you can have behavioral issues oh as absolutely. long as you are well they were controlled and you are not a threat to yourself right most of students. these most of the individuals there's something going on that's the reason they're there yes um, so I think it's important people don't feel like oh my child you know isn't functioning at a level high enough to be able to to participate no, because the point is you're going there for a reason and for supports and for assistance and for help. Um, so, so you're coming into a safe environment right? Uh, with experts in the field so that's we're very proud right. of that by being a non Yeah I think the staff to... the staff of your program is one of the strengths. Plus with um, neurological disorders with plus with things that affect the nervous system neurological things like Asperger's and other symptoms it can be so very different because it's so different for every person so 100%. that's why the pro 
that's why that case watch is so precise because they're trying to make sure they can pinpoint exactly if the student can be helped or if they would be better somewhere else because it would be cruel to parents have them enroll and get hopes and then it turns out the child it's just not a good fit. Right. Yes. Agreed. So we like to have them come for tours, mm -hmm. spend a couple days. That's a good Absolutely. point. You have open houses. I we do. We have experience the IPA days at every center. So the families get to come, tour the building, and then when they're a little bit farther along in the interview process, if they're interested, they can come and spend a few days at the center and see we if they really are a good fit. We come and do that quite recently. I believe his name was Jake. We did. Great. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming. It's been a pleasure chatting with you both. Thank you. And that's it from the Dr. Judy Show.